No more half-truths. Tell me everything or I'm ending the journey now. I mean it, Harry. If I do, I risk destroying the second foundation before it's even been created. Hey guys, Pete here. Today I'm going to do another Book to Show Changes video for Foundation, covering episodes 7 and 8. And I mentioned in my last one of these that it's getting harder to do it, and that's continued to be the case. There's only a few things to mention here, so I'll try to keep it short, and then come back and do something more comprehensive at the end of the season, where we have a better idea of where things are heading. I'm going to talk about things that happened in the books, so there will be some light spoilers in that way, but I'm going to try to do it so that I don't give away future plot points. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. The first change to talk about is the reveal of the second foundation. Harry did keep the details to himself, other than saying that it was an essential part of his plan, but in the original trilogy, you don't learn about this until the second half of the second book, and then the third book is actually called the second foundation, and you find out a whole lot more about it. Revealing that it exists earlier is probably not a bad idea because it does sort of come out of nowhere and it feels somewhat like an afterthought, if not a deus ex machina, when you do learn about it. In episode 8, we find out the reason that Harry's going to Helicon is to set this up at what he calls Star's End. The idea of Star's End does come from the book, but it has nothing to do with Harry's home planet or this idea of a dark star that keeps it hidden. Second Foundation is hidden, but it's in a completely different way. When Asimov came back and wrote the prequels at the end of his life, he basically retconned the original trilogy by adding a backstory for the Second Foundation. So it seemed like the show was picking up on that, and one of the other changes they added, this idea of Gale saying that she can feel the future, setting her apart as someone who basically has powers, that's something that does come directly from the book and is tied to the Second Foundation, but the powers are different. In the books, there are several characters that Asimov calls mentalics. They have abilities, but they weren't clairvoyant or precogs. They were telepathic. And I won't explain that all now because maybe we'll know a little bit more by the end of the season, considering that Salvor has some things going on too. But what seems most interesting about this to me is that you make this big change where you keep Harry's consciousness alive. In the books, the character came back at different points in the story, but never in an active role. It was basically just to reinforce the idea that he saw these crises that the Foundation would experience ahead of time. And he would reveal that through pre-recorded messages, which was reassuring to people, and helped to keep the plan going. I think keeping his consciousness involved could be a good thing. It keeps Jared Harris involved and you could bring in some of the things from the prequels and have them happen concurrently with the first Foundation's development. The second Foundation doesn't come into play until something like 300 years after the Exile to Terminus. But the whole thing with Gale leaving makes that character the big mystery here. David Goyer has said that Gale is a combination of two characters, and as her story unfolds, it's hard to say who the second one is. I thought she had aspects of Hugo's story. He was Harry's right-hand man who came up with the idea of the Second Foundation. The trip she's on now to Synax would put her there around the time the first book ends, but in the show's present, the Terminus timeline can't catch up to that by the end of the first season, so she'll be asleep for the major developments that happen on Terminus in the early years of the First Foundation. It's possible that she could go to Synax and then still come back to form the Second Foundation, but it doesn't really feel likely after she left. I mean, she does have Rach's knife, which may still contain a copy of Harry, but who even knows how that works? So at this point, the idea of her being a combination of Gale and Hugo Amaril is less compelling than it was. She could come back to Terminus later and take on one of the roles there, or she could turn out to be in one of the important players in the Second Foundation like Preem Pulver, or she could take on the main role from the sequels, since that character was special in a way that some people seem to think doesn't exist in the Foundation series. 
I don't know. To me, it's not that worrying that she seems to be able to see the future, because I imagine that there will be Asimov-style mentalics introduced either way. I just wonder what that ability is leading to, because it's kind of exciting to not know what's in store, other than she is definitely the voice of the narrator that is speaking to us from the future. And I suppose that's enough about that. The big change that happened this week that I've seen a lot of chatter about was that Demerzel killed Halima, which appears to violate Asimov's laws of robotics. And I talked about this in my AMA video, but just to reiterate, the showrunner explained the main robot character that connects all the series together, R. Daniil Oliva, is part of the iRobots rights. So the Apple series can't use that name and some of the details related to the character. It sounds complicated, but they have access to the Demerzel side of the character, which is the same, but it doesn't sound like they can use that name and possibly not refer directly to some of the things that happened in the robot series. He followed that up saying Asimov's robotics laws do exist in the universe of the show, but that doesn't necessarily mean Demerzel is presently bound by them, and to explain further would spoil far too much. So the laws of robotics exist, which means that a robot can't kill a human. Even when you factor in the Xeroth law, where they can because humanity as a whole is placed ahead of the fate of a single human, it still isn't easy to do for reasons that I won't get into in this video. I think the main thing to keep in mind here is the second part of his quote there, where he says, I can't say more because it would be too much of a spoiler. When I look at that, he's saying that something has happened to Demerzel to block the three laws. And it's been a while since I read the robot short stories, but I can think of at least one example where they did do that. And there might be more. From what I remember, most of those stories revolve around the implications of the laws. Sometimes there's unforeseen things that happen, and sometimes there's unintended consequences. And by the end of the robot series, positronic robots like Daniil are exceedingly rare. And that tracks with Demerzel being the last of her kind in the TV series. The laws are important to how she does what she does in the big picture of things. But it doesn't seem like it would throw everything off if there was a different law imposed that superseded the original ones for a few centuries. Hopefully it's a good idea, they do it for a good reason, but I think it's kind of a wait and see situation. And Demerzel killed someone at the beginning of the second episode either way, so this isn't new. Something's going on with Demerzel. The laws of robotics are really straightforward, so I don't think it's a situation where they don't understand how they work, and I'm willing to wait and see where they're going with it. It's like a lot of things that I hear people say. I get where people are coming from when they say it doesn't feel like what they expected, but I think it's too early to tell if it's actually a bad thing or not. We're coming up on episode 9. It's pretty well established that they're doing their own thing. And I think that's a good place to leave things. Let me know what you think in the comments. Who's the other character that's combined into Gale's storyline? Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.